We're now going to look at the insertion of a chest drain. Remember, it's never an emergency. You would only ever have to insert a chest drain on the advice of your medical advisor. There's a triangle of safety within which the chest drain has to be inserted. The triangle is marked at the bottom by a line across the nipple, by a line down the middle of the armpit or axilla, and by a line from the muscle here, which runs down, giving us triangle. Traditionally, we put it within this triangle in the fifth intercostal space in the mid-axillary line. So, counting the ribs down, this is going to be where we insert our chest drain. Insertion of a chest drain is painful. Your medical advisor will probably suggest that uh, you give some sort of intramuscular analgesia. And that would be given half an hour or so before uh, the procedure to give it time to take effect. The first step is going to be then introducing local anaesthetic. In the pack you will see there are three sizes of needles. The first one is for the superficial skin area. Draw up 10 mils of local anaesthetic and attach the smallest of the needles. Remember to put this in very shallow. Draw back to make sure that you're not in a vein and then just inject gradually small amount round in a complete circle. Remove the needle and then attach the next size. And this go in deeper into the subcutaneous tissue. Again drawing back to make sure you're not in a vein and gradually injecting. And then with the final needle you're going to go in right to the level of the rib and you will feel the needle hit the rib and just inject as you pull out from there. Remember, this is a sterile procedure. Our next step is to swab down the area that we're going to be working on. And repeat this two or three times. And then having draped the area, our next step is to take the scalpel and make an incision. Oh perhaps an inch or so. We now need to extend this incision through the muscle down to the rib. Two ways of doing it. One is to use forceps, pop them into the area and just open and close them several times. And that actually allows uh, you to force open the muscle fibres. An alternative to the forceps is to use your finger to develop gap in the muscle fibres. Then prepare your chest drain. The chest drain comes with the, an introducer. Remove this 
we are not going to use it. Remove the cap at the top and using your forceps insert them into the, one of the holes at the top of the chest drain. Pop your finger back into the space that you've created and use that as a guide to insert the chest drain. You can, if you want, clamp off the bottom of this whilst you insert the chest drain. It's useful if there's fluid, but less important if it's purely air. Once we have this in place, we can remove the forceps. The next step is to attach the chest drain to the wall and attach a bag to the end of the drain. We'll look at attaching the chest drain to the wall shortly, but firstly, if we have a look at how to attach a bag. This piece of equipment which you have in the pack clearly shows which side attaches to the lung side and which attaches to the bag side. So insert this side into the lung side and the bag to the other side. The Asherman chest seal is essentially designed for a treatment of a sucking chest wound. Um, it has a one-way valve that allows air to escape. What to do is to take the end of the chest drain and just with a bit of pressure push through. Then remove the backing and attach it to the chest wall, giving you a very, very good strong seal. And then, of course, just attach the bag as normal.